Uh, so here we have Nyssa sylvatica, black gum. Um, the reason why we're doing this this month is because it's the first day of September, and as you can see, it's already changing colors. This is one of the first signs of fall to me is when the black gum changes. It turns this kind of pinkish orange color um, pretty early in the autumn. Um, we're here in central Pennsylvania, yeah, uh, uh, the first day of September, um, and we already have a bunch of the leaves littering the ground. So it might not seem like it's time for autumn yet, but uh, it's on its way because of the black gum um, changing colors. And so the leaves are very distinctive. Well, I guess they're not very distinctive, but they're pretty distinctive once you know what to look for. They are an obovate shape, which means they're egg-shaped um, with the, the wide end towards the tip. They also sometimes will have this little... Um, little bit of a tip to them there um, so you can see that kind of a little wave right at the very end of, the, of each leaf um, but they are simple leaves pretty smooth margin um, uh, pinnate venation meaning that the uh, the veins are coming out in sort of a feather shape um, and uh, and then besides that besides the leaves they do have very distinctive bark so we'll look here at a larger tree here's a small one um, they have the bark splits in these sort of vertical ridges, um, but they start to kind of get broken up every couple of inches. But the bigger it gets, the more dramatic that gets. Uh, so we'll come back here in the woods a little bit. Um, we have some mature ones here. Uh, they get a lot bigger than this. Um, black gum is actually one of our longest living um, trees in the east, which is pretty cool. Um, they'll live hundreds of years, 400 years, 500 years. Um, and they'll get very, very big. But see this, they are very much uh, broken up vertically um, with these horizontal cracks, and it almost looks like a cobblestone kind of pattern, but a very light gray bark. Um, so that's distinctive compared to some of our other species that get a kind of cobblestone-like appearance, like persimmons, um, uh, black oaks can do it, um, flowering dogwood, but those all have very dark bark, whereas this is kind of a newspaper gray colored bark. Um, to me, it looks very similar in color to a white oak, Quercus alba, uh, but it, it, it isn't sort of shaggy like them um, and, and has these sort of cobblestones. Um, black gum is a great tree. It's not super valuable um, for timber because it oftentimes um, has rot in the middle, um, but actually that was really valuable at one point in time because uh, they were used uh, essentially for piping. Um, uh, for like aqueducts, um, pioneers would, would cut down black gums and because they're hollow, um, they would convey water with them. And apparently the, um, uh, the whole plumbing of the city of Philadelphia um, was originally mostly black gum logs, which is pretty amazing. Um, but uh, beyond that, so because they have cavities inside them, they're super valuable for wildlife that use cavities in trees. So foxes, raccoons, owls, um, bears, black bears. A really, really big old black gum is, is a great um, overwintering site for a black bear. Uh, they also produce fruits that I, I've been looking, I've been seeing them all weekend, but um, haven't seen them right now. But they're little football shaped fruits that are kind of a bluish color. They almost have the color of a blueberry. There's a little newt um, uh, always by our side. Um, uh, and they fall about this time of year, sort of late August, early September. Um, but yeah, black gum, Nyssa sylvatica, really, really good tree. They grow on drier sites. We're here on a ridge right now, um, but they'll also grow pretty close to streams too. They're a, a pretty broadly tolerant. As long as the soil is, is, is sort of moist and well-drained, um, then, then you'll have black gums around. Uh, just a good, a good tree to have around with our oaks and our hickories and our other hardwood species.